I'm visiting professor now at Hadassah Medical Center in Jerusalem, Israel. After 25 years as professor of psychiatry at Ben Gurion University in the south of Israel. And I've spent my whole career studying lithium, both clinically in patients and the bipolar clinic that I lead, and in the laboratory as to its mechanism of action. And I've had an exciting experience, along with the reward of a high-impact publication, almost every decade over my life as some new biochemical mechanism would come into the literature, like the discovery of ligand binding methods for measuring receptors or the methods of measuring cyclic AMP as a second messenger or the methods for measure measuring phosphatidyl and ositol turnover in cells. And each time a new basic biological mechanism was discovered in the brain, whoop, lithium had effects and we could report those effects. And many of those effects are real, some don't replicate, but most have not stood the test of time in terms of allowing us to develop a new lithium-like compound. They may be epiphenomenon. They may take place perhaps at a level of one to two millimolar, whereas lithium's therapeutic level is somewhat below there, that. So we may have discovered time after time again new mechanisms of lithium's toxicity, but we still don't know lithium's mechanism of action. And that's humbling, but at the same time, I've had many exciting moments. And the new ideas have usually come from meetings such as the one we're at at ECNP or related organizations when I'll hear very, very new data from colleagues about a new mechanism. A, I can remember when I heard about cyclic AMP. I can remember when I heard about phosphatidylinositol. I remember when I heard about the new method of halopyridol, radioactive halopyridol binding uh, from Paul Janssen himself. Uh, and uh, each time this has sent me scurrying back to the lab to see if I could set up the new system and to see if lithium uh, has any effects. I, I'm pleased to do an educational session today and not be on the burden of uh, pushing my own most recent exciting discoveries, but rather of explaining the overall view of my 45 years of research in lithium, because I think the art of psychiatric research is on the one hand to keep one's enthusiasm, one's excitement in the new ideas, but on the other hand, not to believe them so much that they become your religion. You have to find them exciting enough to get a grant and get funding for your research because we will find these answers someday. We cannot descend into nihilism, but not to believe them so much that the public thinks that lithium or mechanism of action is already known because that's going to mislead drug development and get the companies even more disappointed and angry with us uh, than they are. So we have to present these new findings in the light of the history we have of the difficulty of replicating and the difficulty of really attributing mechanism to uh, a new find. And I think ECNP is one of these wonderful organizations that allows people to interact. I've heard some wonderful talks. The keynote lecture by Kay Jamerson, I've heard her several times before. She manages always to bring new data, new ways of thinking with a wonderful personal approach and great responsibility. It was the ideal person for a uh, keynote speaker for our field. And she clearly 
gave the message that these illnesses have been around, will be around, we have to deal with them, there are effective treatments, the effective treatments are not enough, we need better treatments. So we have a purpose at ECNP and in psychopharmacology without overpromising. We don't have to say every day in the newspaper that we have found the answer without doing that telling the truth about how difficult it's going to be to find answers does not in any way impugn the importance of what uh, we are doing. I thought the session on new biomarkers uh, that Andreas Reef chaired was also a paragon of both honesty and uh, excitement, the new use of proteomics and uh, RNA. Uh, uh, fingerprinting in peripheral blood uh, were uh, clearly technological developments that will allow us to open uh, uh, new worlds. And I'm going to be sure to get to Mark Weiser's session with John Ioannidis tomorrow about new methods of improving the uh, the reliability of clinical research because we do have a real problem not only in laboratory data replicability, not only in animal behavior data replicability, but in human studies of these basic illnesses for clinical trials. And the ECNP is putting the right effort into an honest symposium with one of our major international critics, John Ioannidis, who will be here as Mark Wieser's guest.